first i will come sorry uh, forgot to start recording so uh, boron production today we will see about the boron production the borons are nothing but a compounds of boron and hydrogen so the examples of these borons are the first one among those is boron uh, boron diborane b2h6 and pentaborane b5h9 and finally decaborones uh, which is b10h14 then uh, where are these borons are used as similar to the uh, uh, hydrazine which is also used as a high energy chemicals in the rocket propellant system so as those the borons are also used in the rocket propellant system these borons are especially used in the superseding uh, supersonic aeroplanes then what is supersonic subsonic and sonic flows these are the flow types which are classified based on their mach number we might have seen this mach number supersonic subsonic and sonic flows in the fluid mechanics course okay what is supersonic supersonic is nothing but whose mach number mach number is greater than 1 now what is mach number mach number is the ratio of velocity of fluid to the velocity of sound u by c so when this mach number is greater than 1 we classify that particular flow type as a supersonic flow when this mach number is less than 1 we classify that uh, uh, particular type of uh, flow as a subsonic flow when this mach number is equal to 1 we classify that a particular type of flow as a sonic flow okay especially the supersonic flow because the high um, without, uh, which are the high flow systems uh, these borons are used in this supersonic aeroplanes as a rocket propellants the next use is the catalyst it is used as a catalyst in polymerization reactions the next as a reducing agent in many type of organic synthesis reactions okay then next one is a vulcanization agent a vulcanizing agent for natural and synthetic rubber then what is vulcanization vulcanization is nothing but a heating of uh, uh, rubber with uh, together with a sulfur so that it will gain some uh, uh, some tensile strength elasticity okay in the vulcan in the vulcanization of rubber these borons are used as a vulcanizing agent the next one it is used in many forms of coating materials as a coating materials it can be used then what are the raw materials required in order to produce these borons so raw materials are methanol boric acid sodium metal hydrogen boron trifluoride or trichloride depends on whichever the raw material we choose and then uh, glycol ether and mineral oil so these are the reactions which will takes place while uh, the boron borons are produced so along with flow sheet we will try to discuss these reactions the first uh, first one among the flow sheet starts here in which the uh, methanol and boric acid will react in a methyl borate reactor to give you a molecule of methyl borate as you can see in the reaction a so reaction a is three molecules of methanol will react with one molecule of boric acid to give methyl borate one molecule of methyl borate with liberation of three molecules of water this reaction a will takes place in the methyl borate reactor in which methanol will react with a boric acid to give methyl borate then next one is the sodium hydrate reactor in which sodium in the metal form will react with a hydrogen coming from a synthesis gas plant so uh, the reaction between sodium metal and hydrogen will takes place in order to give a sodium hydrate as per the reaction b na plus h will give a sodium hydrate this reaction will takes place in sodium hydrate reactor the formed products from this sodium hydrate reactor is nah the formed product from this methyl borate reactor is methyl borate this methyl borate and sodium uh, hydroxide uh, sodium hydride formed here will go to the sodium borohydrate jacketed reactor since this the formation of sodium borohydrate is the highly exothermic reaction we need to control this reactions inside a jacketed reactor so we in order to control this uh, uh, high temperature produced during the exothermic reaction we use a cooling water which is circulated around the jacket of the reactor then the reaction c will takes place in the Uh, this sodium borohydrate jacketed reactor then reaction c is seven molecules of sodium hydride formed in reaction b and one molecule of uh, methyl borate formed in reaction a reaction a will mix uh, will undergo a reaction to give uh, undergo a reaction in order to give a sodium borohydrate which is nabh4 and liberation of six uh, um, sodium metals and three molecules of Uh, methanol these two uh, will be recycled back to their respective reactor see from here the methanol will be recycled back to the methyl borate reactor in which it will combine with a makeup methanol 
and go to the methyl borate reactor and sodium metal which is liberated from here six molecules of sodium metal uh, dispersed in the mineral oil will go to the will recycle back to the sodium hydrate reactor so the formed uh, this so formed sodium borohydrate will be sent to the diborate reactor in which it is mixed with a glycol ether and reacted with uh, <coughs> boron chloride trichloride or boron trichloride depends on the whichever reactant we choose then this will uh, this uh, sodium borohydrate borohydrate will react with this one boro uh, boron trichloride boron trichloride in order to give a diborous b2h6 which is in the gaseous form okay uh, if we desire we can use this diborane as our product otherwise we can enrich this diborane with the hydrogen as given in reaction e as given in this reaction e uh, okay this reaction d in which the boron trichloride or trichloride will react with sodium sodium borohydrate in the diborane reactor okay uh, bf3 uh, bf3 and bcl3 okay this is x bx3 it is given so this x is nothing but this chlor um, chlorine or uh, fluoride or chloride okay depends on the which of the reactant we are choosing this will nabh uh, nabh4 sodium borohydrate will react with the boron um, trichloride or trichloride and gives a diboranes which is in the gaseous form with the liberation of uh, na x is nothing but chlorine or a chlorine fluoride or a chlorine then three molecules of methanol will be regulated now if we desire to uh, <coughs> desire to use this diborane which is in a gaseous form we can use otherwise this diborane can be enriched with with the use of hydrogen in order to give a more desirable pentaborane reactor in a hydrogenated catalytic reactor or simply a pentaborane reactor okay the, in which the reaction e will takes place in which diborane will react with the x molecules of hydrogen to give a y molecules of pentaborane okay this is also a pentaborane z molecules of pentaborane okay this reaction e will takes place in the pentaborane reactor which is a hydrogenated catalytic reactor in which the diborane will be enriched with hydrogen then we will get a more desirable pentaborane outside this reactor now this is in the liquid form so we can uh, if we desire to use this pentaborane in our, uh, in our end use then we can store it in a liquid form otherwise when we desire to use a uh, when we desire to go for a more desirable decaborate which is in a powder form so we can use uh, we can uh, send this pentaborate to the decaborane reactor in which it will undergo just pyrolysis reaction as given in a reaction f and reaction g in this one the pentaborates will just undergo a pyrolysis reaction to give a decaborane b10h14 and this this is also a b10h10 this is also a pentaborane and b4h10 which is a uh, tetraborane okay With the liberation of a less small molecules of uh, tetraborane the reaction f and g will take place in the decaborane reactor the h2 which is left uh, left behind as the pyrolysis reaction is just uh, purged as a h2 purge okay so the final product will be obtained is a decaborane powder okay this is overall briefing about the flow sheet hope uh, i understood now after uh, this discussing about this major, major engineering problems i will discuss once again so the major engineering problems in this uh, flow sheet in the manufacturing or a production of borane is this toxicity control how this toxicity uh, we have to control because the permissible levels of uh, uh, diborane or pentaborane whatever the borane uh, in the air is 0.01 to 0.1 ppm only so it is very 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 less amount of concentration should be there in the atmosphere in order to control this we have to adopt many safety and control precautions okay toxicity is uh, toxicity control is at most importance uh, in production of diborane so we need to uh, put our uh, higher limit higher limit uh, in between 0.01 to 0.1 in the atmosphere so next one is the reactivity control since borane we already know it is a highly explosive reactant highly explosive components when these borane are reacted with air or water present inside the reactor it will give a extremely uh, explosive reaction so we need to tear, uh, take care the, uh, in the design and operation of this uh, borane production reactors so that it will not react with air and ox uh, air and water okay so uh, in order to carry out this uh, before send, before sending any reactor before uh, loading any reactor uh, reactant to the reactors we need to purge the uh, 
purge the purge the air inside the reactor with the inner atmosphere like nitrogen or argon okay before sending before loading any reactant to the particular reactor we need to completely dry the reactor in order to uh, in order to separate out or uh, in order to dry the water amount of water which ever present inside the reactors and the next the this is a highly explosive reaction so whenever the reactors are there reactors must be separated out with the, behind the concrete barricades okay around the reactor there should be some concrete barricades in order to lower the uh, disastrous reactions inside the reactor whenever some safety mishaps will happen will happen therefore it could not produce any uh, toxicity outside uh, to the outside environment okay so major engineering problems are first one is the toxicity problem among the toxicity problem we need to control and limit our borings uh, borings discharge into the atmosphere to the very very low level which is 0.01 to 0.1 ppm or mg per liter okay then next one is the reactivity control so borane compounds borane compounds are very much uh, highly reactive compounds whenever the air it, it it reacts with air or it reacts with water it will give you a highly disastrous reactions which will just explode like anything so extreme care must be taken in designing the reactors at the same time in operation of this reactor they in order to uh, control this reactivity before charging any of the reactant into the reactor we need to purge that uh, reactor with using the inert atmosphere like nitrogen or argon otherwise uh, uh, in order to remove the water content which is already present in the reactor we need to completely dry that reactant so that no water is present inside the um, reactor we need to ensure this both uh, using the inert atmosphere and also completely dry the reactor before loading any of the reactant into the reactors and reactors this is a highly disastrous reaction so reactors every reactor should be built behind the concrete barricades okay these are the major engineering problems okay now we will quick, uh, quickly resign, uh, revise what is the borane production so boranes are nothing but a boron and hydrogen compounds okay this is the definition of boranes then examples of boranes are the diboranes pentaboranes and decaboranes okay which are produced in the borane production then uses uh, as similar to the hydrazines uh, these borines are also a high energy chemical so these are also used in the rocket propulsion systems so uh, borines uh, especially the borines are used in the supersonic aeroplanes the supersonic aeroplanes are nothing but the whose mach number whose the flow velocity is classified greater than mach number is greater than 1 okay these are used borines are used as a used as a rocket fuels in the supersonic aeroplanes then these borines are used as a polymerization catalyst in a polymerization reactions okay then uh, next it is used as a reducing agent in many organic synthesis reactions then it is also used as a vulcanizing agent in the in the manufacture of natural and synthetic rubber vulcanization is nothing but heating of rubber with a sulfur so that it can gain a tensile strength and elasticity so next used for the borines or the it is used in many types of coatings then the raw materials used for this borane manufacturing is the methanol boric acid sodium metal hydrogen boron trichloride or trichloride whichever the reactant we select then glycol glycol ether and mineral oil these are the reaction which will undergo during the production process so these reactions we will discuss along with the flow sheet uh, in the first uh, the flow sheet starts from here in the methyl borate reactor the methanol uh, methanol along with boric acid will be sent uh, will be loaded and this methanol and boric acid will undergo a reaction as given in reaction a which is three molecules of methanol will react with a one molecule of boric acid in order to give you a methyl borate here in the methyl borate reactor okay with the liberation of three molecules of water then in the separate reactor which is labeled as a sodium hydride reactor in which the metal uh, sodium in the metal form will react with a hydrogen coming from the synthesis gas so these two reacted na and h2 will react with each other in order to give a sodium hydride as given in the reaction b a sodium uh, sodium is the uh, sodium is present in the metal form in order to clear uh, in order to have a uh, it in a reactant form we need to disperse this sodium metal inside the mineral oil so mineral oil is used to disperse the finely divided particles of sodium ion. sodium metal inside the mineral oil then the formed sodium hydride along with the formed methyl borate in these two reactors will go to the sodium borohydride reactor in which it they, these two uh, the products coming from these two uh, sodium hydride and methyl borate will combine and react with each other 
which is classified as an exothermic reaction. So, in order to cool the temp uh, control the temperature inside this exothermic reactor, we use a jacket re jacketed reactor in which the cooling water will be circulated. Then the uh, then the product coming out of this reactor is a sodium borohydrate as given in reaction C. Okay, seven molecules of sodium hydride is reacting with a sodium borohydride to give a uh, sodium uh, uh, to give a sodium borohydride. So this sodium borohydride is a uh, exothermic reaction. This reaction is exothermic reaction. In order to control the temperature, we are giving a jacketed reactor in which the cooling water will be separated. And the uh, the products formed here is six molecules of uh, sodium metal will be liberated around with three molecules of methanol so these two um, products will be recycled back unused reactants so uh, here the methanol will be recycled back to the methyl borate reactor and sodium in the dispersed form along with mineral oil will be recycled back to the sodium hydride reactor then the formed sodium borohydrate will be uh, sent to the uh, diborane reactor in which it is mixed with the glycol ether then these reactants this diborane will be reacted with boron fluoride trichloride or trichloride uh, to form a diborane as given in reaction E, uh, reaction E. So in, in between reaction D is there in which the sodium boride, uh, borohydrate is formed is mixed with a glycol ether along with a uh, along with the reactant with a boron trichloride or trichloride. The reaction takes place here is this E uh, D reaction. So the end product will be this diborane. Okay, along with liberation of sodium uh, fluoride or sodium chloride, which of the reactant we use with the three molecules of methanol. Then the form of diborans, uh, diborans, which is in the gaseous form. If you want, we can use this diborans as our end product. Otherwise, we need to enrich this diboran with it with the use of uh, hydrogen. The reaction between the diboran and uh, hydrogen is this reaction E, in which the pentaborans, more desirable pentaborans, will be formed. These pentaborans, if you want, we can. Uh, these pentaborans will be formed in a pentaborane reactor, which is a hydrogenated catalytic reactor. <coughs> if you want this uh, pentaborane as a end product, we can use this end product in the liquid form. We can store this uh, pentaborane in a liquid storage tank, and we can use as a end use. Otherwise, the more desirable low pressure decaborane can be uh, formed by sending this pentaborane to the decaborane reactor, in which the reaction F and G will take place in which the pentaborane just undergoes a pyrolysis reaction nothing but heating of uh, this pentaborane to a extreme temperature then the, uh, it will liberate a decaborane b10 h40 and b10 h10 these two are the pentaborane with a small fraction of uh, tetraborane will be liberated b4 h10 so the finally the formed product is decaborane in a powder to form remember this deca uh, diborane in the, in the gases form and pentaborane in the liquid form and decaborane in the powdered form. Then the major engineering problems in this is toxicity control. This toxicity control is uh, uh, toxicity control is uh, where we have to limit the upper limit of this uh, borans in the atmosphere to 0.01 to 0.1 ppm or mg per liter. The next one is the reactivity control. Since borans are the highly explosive reactions, we need to avoid uh, avoid these borans contacted with air or water. If these borans contacted with this air or water, if it uh, explode like anything, then it will uh, have a disastrous reactions inside. Therefore, in order uh, in order to avoid the contact of borans with air and water, we need to uh, take care um, extremely uh, take care the uh, take care of the design and operation of these reactors. In order to avoid this uh, contact between air and uh, air water and uh, borans, we need to fully purge the reactors before loading any of the reactant inside the reactor and we need to dry completely in order to uh, flush out the water present in the reactor before loading any of the reactant inside the reactor then uh, this is these are the borans reactions of the explosive reactions we need to construct our reactors behind the concrete barricades okay this is the uh, completion of unit one if you have any doubts you can go, go through i hope uh, today's boron production you understood Okay. If anything is left behind, just ask me or any doubts you have, just you can contact me anytime. Okay, anybody doubts?
anybody from the girl side or boy side any doubts just ask me if you have any doubts i think all are sleeping no sir not sleeping okay no <laughs> doubts no doubts okay okay we will see just we will quickly resign the uh, revise the unit 1 okay uh, this is the unit 1 so this is titled as nuclear materials and explosives and propellants in which the part a will contain nuclear materials and part b will be the explosives and propellants so part a in the nuclear materials we will discuss uh, what are the nuclear materials involved in the introduction and how this nuclear energy is important to the india especially to our country then uh, what are the economic justifications to use the nuclear power apart from using the normal conventional or a traditional Uh, uh electricity producing like hydroelectric uh, uh, many other coal fired uh, power plants why can't we use them why uh, why we have to give a justification to use a nuclear power plant we will discuss in the economic justification of a nuclear power plant then the next one is the nuclear agro uh, industrial complex which is popularly known as a nuclear uh, nuplex or nuplex which are the complex combination of uh, agricultural fertilizer pesticide industry together with the metal industry club in a uh, one unit uh, together sorry so together together with a nuclear production plant nuclear power production plant which is a complex plant we will have to discuss that nuplex then next one is the uh, energy via nuclear fusion reactors okay we need to differentiate what is nuclear fusion and nuclear fusion then how this nuclear energy will be obtained through a simple example of a reaction then next one is the role of chemical engineering in nuclear engineering so what is the role of a chemical engineering in for, uh, in just obtaining the electricity or a power from the nuclear power plant we have to discuss that one then uh, the next important components which are present in the nuclear fusion reaction the components are fuel fuels obviously the fuels in the form of whether it is a fertile fuel or a fissionable fuel and the components of a um, reactor like moderators adsorbent coolants and the uh, overall fuel cycle we have to discuss then the next is the methods of production uh, concentration purification of Our uh, conversion of ores. We have to discuss. This is the part A syllabus. Then nuclear power. Nuclear power is nothing but a use of a nuclear reactions in order to uh, get the energy through the atomic bombardment. Okay. Just simply we can say this is nothing but a atomic bombardment in which the during this bombardment whatever the energy we are obtaining from this atom bombardment we can use it for to the conversion to the electricity in the steam power uh, uh, steam turbines. okay the nuclear power uh, can be obtained from the nuclear fusion nuclear dr nuclear fusion reactions so nuclear fusion is at in a experimental stage whereas nuclear fusion fusion firma phenomena is a natural phenomena so we can't use uh, until and uh, at it is in a r&d stage whereas nuclear fusion is somewhat advanced compared to the nuclear fusion reactions uh, same is the case with the nuclear decay reactions there are various nuclear energy materials like uranium plutonium and thorium uh, okay as per the international atomic energy agency iaea okay which is uh, uh, which is stationed at vienna austria Hello, sir. Hello. Chitra. 
रिकॉर्ड पावर नहीं है कहते रहे ग्रुप में मैसेज किया देख तो क्लास सुन रहा फिर क्या क्या सारा ना डिफरेंस है तो ये वाला। Do some work, please revise unit one. So आगे पाते inconvenience, power gone है ना सर। Power gone में ना all are gone. Bye bye. Next टर्म which subject? I am stats. Students number seventeen. Add people. I will teach industry management and third world. Ravi, it is recording, Ravi. Ah. Uh.
ఆయన అదే అంటాడు కదా వచ్చి మనం ఏం చేయగలం కరెక్టే గాని sorry for the inconvenience just lost my power connection hello yes sir yeah sir mm-hmm. yes okay thank you i will continue from same okay uh, okay nuclear power is nothing but a uh, atomic energy which is produced through the atoms when they are bombarded then there are various advantages and disadvantages in this one so advantages among those is uh, relatively low cost as compared to around uh, some 3.7 paisa it is coming the cost uh, for nuclear production um, uh, electricity production from nuclear power plant is coming uh, 3 rupees whereas uh, Uh, cost from you know, coal fired reactors it is uh, electricity production from coal fired reactors is coming around 3.7 paisa we have seen in the uh, economic justification for the nuclear power plant so it is relatively low cost compared to other types of electricity production and it will have a low uh, pollution okay unlike other coal fired reactors and um, coal uh, coal fired uh, uh, reactors everything so it will not release a greenhouse gases like co2 okay only the problem here is the radioactive material which needs to be decomposed proper waste disposal okay nothing else like a greenhouse gas it will it will be produced so it will have a low pollutants relatively and thorium when we uh, uh, adopt a technology which uses a thorium as an alternative to the uranium so we can uh, have a major advantage in our technology enhancement okay uh, until now uh, every technology is developed in order to use a fission fuel fission fuel is a uranium fuel u235 and 2 uh, 235 whereas u238 is a uh, fertile fuel like a thorium is also a fertile fuel so these fertile fuels we can't use directly in a uranium reactors when we adopt this type of technology which can use uh, thorium alternative it will have a major advancement in our research and development of nuclear power plants then next one is it's a sustainable because uh, the electricity which is produced by uh, 1 kg of uranium material is equal to the energy electricity which is produced by 1 uh, ton of coal okay so it is sustainable so small materials nuclear materials will be enough in order to produce a uh, electricity from a nuclear power plants okay huge amount whereas huge amount of uh, uh, raw material or a coal is required in order to produce electricity from those materials so these materials are nuclear materials are sustainable enough okay then next one is a high energy density okay similarly same high energy density 
okay one uh, uh, one kg of uranium electricity which we produce from one kg uh, is same as the electricity we produce from uh, around one ton of coal so this is the major advantages in uh, using nuclear power plants so <laughs> next disadvantages are the accidents okay there are many major accidents around the world which are happening recently uh, around 2010 in the japan also uh, one accident was there so uh, accidents are common in the nuclear power plants whenever the accidents will happen it uh, the uh, surrounding impact the relative impact will be for the generations and generations the health hazard the environmental hazard which this nuclear power plants will produce will remain for the generations okay not for the single generation it will remain uh, uh, for the generations it will gene modify gene also the next disadvantage is the radioactive waste disposal as we described the we the waste which we produce from this nuclear power plant the disposal of this is very very uh, disadvantage until now for the nuclear power plants okay the these are the various uh, uh, accidents two uh, two major disasters i have taken as a case study the first one among the chernobyl disaster which has happened in the ukraine okay the uh, reactors has been uh, blasted out here and you can see the steam steam or a water vapors which are coming out uh, for the number of uh, number of days after this disaster also you can see everything will be lost and uh, the lives of around 19000 to 25000 around uh, lives are already lost and many generations has been affected due to this uh, chernobyl uh, disaster which has happened in the ukraine and next one is uh, fushima daiichi nuclear disaster which has happened in a uh, japan this is also a blast uh, happened in the japan in which the uh, not majorly the lives has been lost uh, uh, this is not a big disaster as that of this uh, chernobyl reactor chernobyl disaster whereas the impact which has produced which this disaster produced on the environment has been uh, lasting from years and years now even a decade has been passed after this uh, accident now also uh, the relative impact of this disaster we can see in the in this uh, fushima daiichi region which is in japan okay then these are the organizations which are responsible uh, for conducting research and development at the same time for production of uh, nuclear energy the first one among is baba atomic research center which is named after the uh, uh, known scientist renowned scientist uh, homi baba dr dr homi jangir baba okay then next one is a tata institute of fundamental research okay these are also having a mini branch and nuclear power corporation of india limited Uh, the next one is the bharatiya vigya uh, nigam limited bhavini then next one is uranium corporation uh, uranium corporation india limited ucil and indira gandhi center for atomic research which is a rnd all these organizations are under, under the control of department of atomic energy okay these are the organizations which are responsible for production development research in india then uh, they are the uh, indian physicists who are conducting the pioneer research in nuclear physics in the uh, uh, developmental stage in india especially in okay then uh, dr meghnath saha uh, on whose name uh, the nuclear saha institute of nuclear physics which is located at uh, kolkata which is named after his name only saha meghnath saha he is also a pioneer researcher uh, during the initial stages of uh, research uh, in the nuclear physics which has started in india around 1940 1950 region then dr homi jahangir baba we already know uh, baba atomic research center which is uh, named after him only okay you can read the popular story of uh, conversation between jawaharlal nehru the then prime minister of india and this uh, dr homi jahangir baba it's a popular uh, popular story and it's a very interesting story you can search and just read the story okay then uh, dr r s krishnan okay he is also a pioneer in, in conducting uh, nuclear research in india then uh, various nuclear power plants are located in india there are already seven operational power plants uh, are there in india and seven are under construction plants okay there are total overall in this plant there are totally 
22 reactors are already there. So electricity in this type of electricity production, especially nuclear uh, electricity production, India is the fifth largest country. Okay, so um, the drawbacks uh, are the low capacity. Okay, due to the lack of a fuel, nuclear fuel, the directly fissionable fuel like uranium, uh, we are using the uh, uh, very low capacity of these power plants. Okay, uh, the, the power plant capacity is around 6,780 megawatts. Okay, we don't have a fuel to, in order to, uh, we don't have a nuclear fuel like uranium, direct fissionable fuel. So, we can't use the maximum capacity of 6,780. So, we are using the low capacity compared to this 6,780. So, this is the major drawback. And then uh, there are various processes going on around the country uh, uh, in front of a uh, construct, already constructed plant at the same time, which are already in the construction stage because of many uh, um, many disasters which are happening around the world. They are citing this. There are many political organizations, NGOs are responsible for conducting this type of protest in order to uh, uh, go back from the construction of these nuclear power plants. Okay, then these are the seven operations which are already uh, operating to their capacity, which are operated by Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited. So these are located in Kaiga, Karnataka, Gujarat, Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu has the two uh, nuclear power plants and Rajasthan one, Uttar Pradesh one, and Maharashtra is also containing one nuclear power plant. All all these are operated by the Nuclear Power Corporation of India Limited, which is the PSU. Then nuclear power, uh, power plants which are under construction, which are yet to be constructed and uh, they are expected to be constructed by 2026. All these plan, uh, the first one among those is Madras in, uh, in Tamil Nadu, Kalaparkam it is there. So it is uh, uh, operated by Bhavini and uh, Kapur, uh, Kakrapur unit 3 and unit 4 which are already in Gujarat which is going uh, construction. It will be expected to construct by 2020 and one is in Gorakhpur, Haryana is also present and Rajasthan, Unit 7 and Unit 8 already one is operational in Rajasthan and this is under construction which is expected to uh, complete by 2020 and Tamil Nadu also uh, two reactors, two units they are constructing which are expected by uh, expected to be constructed to be by 2025 to 2026. The overall estimated capacity uh, when these uh, plants are in operation are 6700 megawatts. Then these are the nuclear fuel results uh, which are uh, discovered in India. So first one among those is Tumalapalli belt in Andhra Pradesh. The major uh, exploration uh, major exploration has been happened in 2011. In March 2011, they have discovered these two uh, uh, heavy nuclear reserves. So first one among is Tumalapalli belt in Andhra Pradesh and Bhima Basin in Karnataka. So Tumalapalli belt is the uh, one of the world's top 20 uranium reserves, we can probably say. Then uh, the estimated uh, discovered capacity of this Tumalapalli belt is 44,000. Then people are saying that the estimated, when we estimate the total Tumalapalli belt, we will get a two to uh, three times more than this 44,000 uh, tons of capacity. So this is a huge uh, nuclear fuel results in, uh, in our India. And next one is the Bhima Basin. Although this is not that much huge as the top Tumalapalli belt, but the grade of uranium which is available through this uh, basin is very high grade compared to this Tumalapalli belt. Okay, but it is a very smaller in size. Then uh, uh, India's domestic uranium reserves are small and country is dependent on uranium imports. We are Im uh, importing the uh, uranium reserves from countries like Russia and Kazakhstan. So uh, in the recent years, India has shown increased interest in the thorium fuel. So thorium fuel, using the thorium fuel in our nuclear power plant will be a major uh, technical advancement because when we can use this thorium fuel directly into our nuclear fuel reactors, it will create a major impact on our uh, uh, nuclear energy production because India contains, uh, contains huge amount of thorium as a resource in the form of monoxide beach sand, whereas India has very less amount of a, uh, low grade uranium. Okay, then economic justification as we uh, seen that uh, the cost for the nuclear pro energy production is uh, divided into two forms variable cost and fixed cost so first one is the uh, fixed cost the fixed cost investment for the coal power uh, coal fired plant is uh, coming around 900 to 1000 per every kilowatt whereas nuclear power plant is coming around 1200 to 1500 rupees per every kilowatt so uh, nuclear power plant is uh, uh, fixed cost for the nuclear power plant is little bit higher than compared to the coal fired power plants then next one is the variable cost the variable cost coming for the uh, nuclear power plant is less compared to the 
coal fire plant because the transportation of a uh, tons and tons of coals required uh, additional cost whereas transportation of a minimum amount of uh, nuclear energy uh, is uh, uh, cost is nothing when compared to the transportation of this uh, tons and tons of coal so variable cost is coming uh, uh, coming very low compared to the uh, coal power plants so net result will be the 3.7 paisa uh, per every kilowatt hour in case of coal fire uh, coal fire plant whereas 3 pa 3 paisa only in the uh, okay uh, 3 paisa only in the nuclear power plant per every kilowatt hour so next one is the nuclear agro industrial complex so nuclear uh, nuplex it is a combination of a uh, nuclear energy production industry at the same of consumers like uh, uh, agriculture agricultural fields uh, agricultural fields and uh, fertilizer industry pesticide industry and metal man manufacturing industry all the producer the producer nuclear energy is located in one place and all the consumers are also located in one place so india is primarily the agrarian country so uh, using this complex will be very much advantageous for our agricultural as well as industrial advancements so next one is the nuclear fission and nuclear fusion you already know the nuclear fusion is nothing but a fragmentation of a large molecule into a small molecules whereas nuclear fusion is the a uh, uh, combination of small molecules in order to yield a large molecule so nuclear fission reaction is a, a research developed reaction so it is uh, frequently encountered in our nuclear power industry <clears throat> so nuclear fission uh, reaction is a natural reaction so it will undergo in the uh, naturally in the suns and stars okay so uh, nuclear fission uh, electricity development for nuclear fission is uh, Uh, still now in the research and development stage whereas nuclear fission is somewhat the advanced reaction so every power plant will use a nuclear power a nuclear power plant will use a nuclear fission reaction for its electricity production so this is a simple example for the how nuclear energy is produced so first you can see the uranium 235 which is fission fuel so this will be supplied with a one uh, neuron mol uh, neutron so this neutron will yield u236 uh, when this uh, large molecule will bombard then it will combine b uh, ba144 and kr89 along with liberation of 2 to 3 neutrons this reaction only here is in a simple form we can give here so when the fission fuel is supplied with a one molecule of uh, this neutron one uh, nuclear uh, neutron then this will yield a x and y x and y is nothing but ba144 and kr89 and it will liberate around 2 to 3 uh, neutrons this will initiate a next chain of reaction so this will be a bombarding reaction so here you can see the delta h the change in uh, reaction uh, enthalpy is 18 million kilowatts per every kilo kg of uranium whereas this is 2 million times greater than the energy liberated by burning 1 kg of coal okay so the uh, next one is the nuclear fusion this is the popular phenomenon of combining two atoms in a single atom a single large atom you can see the hydrogen isotope deuterium and hydrogen isotope tritium is combined to a single atom Uh, in which after bombardment it will release a one neutron and helium molecules so next one is a nuclear fuel cycle this in this cycle uh, see that there are two reactors one is the fission reactor next one is the breeder reactor so fission reactor for using directly the uranium like fuels which are fission fuels this reactor will be useful whereas for the fertile fuels like thorium the breeder reactor will be used in which the uh, thorium will undergo a conversion process to yield a uh, uh, fissionable fuel along with this fission of fuel the electricity generated uh, this fission fuel will go to the reactor one which is labeled as one after enrichment with the uh, uf6 gas which is uranium hexafluoride then these fission fuels will re, uh, will just undergo a reaction inside this uh, reactor and the uh, corresponding heat energy will be used in a turbines so that it will uh, produce a energy so after that everything will remains the uh, separation of a spent product and uh, collection of a electricity then there are various important components components of a nuclear fission reactor so fuel structural components uh, uh, fuels is a fertile and fission fuels you can go through the examples so in order to convert a fertile fuel to the fission fuel the reaction will undergo this like this so in which every uh, every transformation reaction will go for the uh, release one electron anti neutrino the structural components for the construction of a nuclear reactor is uh, like a low energy uh, neutron absorption capacity uh, capacity containing uh, materials will be used for the construction of nuclear reactors like zirconia aluminum and stainless steel then the coolants the uh, nuclear energy liberates a large amount of heat so in order to cool those uh, reactors we need to use a, a sodium metal sodium uh, and potassium alloy metals bismuth 
and purified water or deuterium oxide which is a heavy water we can use as a coolant and moderator in order to uh, lower the neutron absorption capacity in a nuclear reactor we need to use a moderator like pure graphite heavy water water and beryllium we can use so i think my time is completed i will stop here okay uh, i will send this ppt just go through it and just uh, study the unit 1 today unit 1 is complete uh, completed so in the next class i will uh, i will ask one body uh, uh, randomly uh, each one to uh, to present one topic at least okay so prepare be prepare for that uh, class in the next four to five classes i will uh, handle those classes like one, like that only so i will just ask anybody randomly so that they can present any one topic okay any one topic of your interest based on this ppt just prepare in such a way okay thank you thank you for listening sir mm -hmm. yes hello hello i think change it the time table yes sir yes sir yeah i am going uh, ah, i just took second right. second hour right sir okay okay yes, ah, okay oh okay. i did it the second sir sorry yes can i join after 2 3 sir yes sir now you can join no 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 i am just leaving you can join